Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Happy Sunday. This is going to be another fun so day today. I hope everyone had a wonderful evening. Those of you that watched me last night, you knew I was feeling a little under the weather, but I am feeling better today, thank goodness. So it's a good, so far, it's a good day today. <laughs> so down below this, the, this video screen in the description, there's a link to where you can get the pattern that I'm going to be using today for my bucket hat. Hold on just a moment. I knew I was forgetting something. So whenever I make, make a garment, or I'm trying out a new pattern, I should say, I always make what is called a mock-up. And that's a test to see just exactly how that pattern's gonna fit. And I strongly recommend anybody that is using new fabric to do that because new fabric is kind of expensive so i have bolts of inexpensive flannel close out flannel that i've bought to do my mock-ups in and this pattern is this hat i'm about to show you is right here okay this the pattern i'm going to be showing you how to cut out today this is what the end result is. And if you just put it on, now there's no interfacing in the brim, so it's super floppy, and this is flannel. Today I'm gonna be cutting up a pair of blue jeans to make one of these hats with. So here's what it would look like on. And as you can see, you can fold it up or whatever. <laughs> I know the fabric is funky, but it was really cheap. I think I paid 60 cents a yard for it and I bought two bolts of it because I knew I was just going to do make, make it to test out patterns with. But this is what we're going to be making with this pattern. And this is called a bucket hat. So all of that being said, let's see here. Hello, Belinda. Hi, Terry. Hi, Gia. Hi, Marcia. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Vanessa. Okay, so th this is what the hat is. Now, that website for the pattern, when you download it, you get three files. One is the instructions, and this is what the first page of the instructions look like right here. Okay, it's all spelled out nice and neat. What you have to do though, and that's the instructions, and then the pattern prints out on three pages. Page one, page two, and page three. I'm gonna show you how to cut this out because there's a certain way you have to do it. And when you look at page one, you'll notice right over here are two boxes. The small box is exactly one inch square. This is how you calibrate your printer to print this out to true size. It's super easy to do. All you have to do when you click on print and the print dialog window pops up is to print it at actual size. Do not enlarge it, do not decrease it, do not click on fit to page. Tell it to print to actual size. This is eight and a half by 11 inch regular printer paper is all it is. And with all of that being said, hi Mia, hi Sarah. Yes, I am feeling better today, thank you. So that being said, once again, here is this, that pattern makes this hat. This one is super floppy because there's no interfacing in it. And we're gonna be cutting the interfacing for this, this next one that I'm gonna be making. So sit back, relax. I'm gonna show, we're gonna do all the cutting and prep work today. Next Sunday, we're actually going to stitch it together, okay? So I'm gonna to swap to a different camera because first, I have to deconstruct some blue jeans. And I have two pairs here. Two pairs of jeans out of a storage trunk, okay? And I'm gonna cut up the first pair. 
gonna cut out this one right here. I'm gonna switch this other camera. There we go. And let's see here. Let me move it over a little bit more so you can really see what I am doing here. I'll do it up here on this ledge as best I can. Now I have two pairs of scissors in, in my sewing room. These are only for fabric. And this is what I use for paper. I used to use these for, for fabric, but they, got, they have gotten super dull and this kind of sprung a little bit. So yeah, this is good for paper. This is good for fabric. Okay. So I'm first gonna deconstruct these jeans. And when you look at a pair of jeans, the outside seam is super bulky. So I'm gonna cut the outside seam off. Let me think here. Because I will use the parts of this in other projects that I plan on shooting, doing live here on TV, here on YouTube. I'm first going to cut out, though, do I want to cut out the waistband first? No, actually, I'm going to cut it out off like this. I just want the legs of this particular pair of jeans. Oops, that got really dark for a second there. There we go. <laughs> And I'm just going to go right across and cut them off at the crotch level out to the outside seam. So we're going to do our first little deconstruction here. There's one leg. Now we're going to do the other one. And you know... <clears throat> If you've ever bought new denim at a fabric shop, it is not cheap. It's, it's as high as 20 or $25 a yard. So go to a thrift store and buy denim to cut up to use for another project is the best way, in my opinion, to do that. Okay, so now I have two legs. And next I'm gonna cut out the hem, the hem on both. Okay. I'm not throwing anything away. This will go into a denim scrap tub for a future project. One of the future projects is a denim tote bag out of recycled jeans. And yes, there is a way to use these pieces I'm cutting off now in that. So if you're doing this, do not throw away your scraps because you will be able to use them in our future project. Okay, so now I'm just gonna cut out the side seam and all that is, <clears throat> is I'm just gonna go down the seam and cut it out. I'm gonna cut right next, right next to that, that really heavy flat folded seam. Cuts don't have to be perfect simply because we are going to manipulate this fabric and cut out the parts to our hat with our paper piece, our paper pattern. I just want to prep the fabric first and then we're going to prep our pattern out. Now check it out. There's a nice big piece of fabric, right? I am going to cut out the other, all the seams though. I don't want any extra bulk. <clears throat> That to deal with when I am actually assembling this hat. I've already learned that from my mock up. There's where the top of the hat meets the brim, there are several layers of fabric right there, and you definitely don't want a big bulky seam from blue jeans to have to contend with when you're doing that. Okay. Plus, this side seam, I have a purpose for that in the tote bag that we'll be making. Okay, there's that. And then an easy way to do the inside, the inseam, the inside seam of the leg, just put right sides together. Right there like that. And then I'm just going to trim, go right up this side seam and trim that off.
I do have two pair of jeans down here. But I think, I'm pretty sure I can do this just out of this one pair I've already cut the legs off of. Now you can do this as far as recycling clothing for other projects. You can actually do that with any type of garment. But there's, and we're going to press this <clears throat> here in a minute. Okay. So there's two leg there's one entire leg right there all cut apart. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. So I'm going to put this down off the workspace. Okay. I'm just cutting it up nice and close to that side seam. Excuse me. And what I'm going to be using for my interfacing to make the brim stiff, if you, don't, if you like a floppy brim, you don't have to, to put any interfacing in it. But for this one, I want the brim to be nice and stiff. So I'm going to cut an interfacing out of fusible fleece. And that should add the the body and stiffness to it that I desire. We'll be doing all of that today. Okay. And yes, if I was, I could do this faster with a rotary cutter and a ruler. However, it'd be much more difficult to video that way and Actually, this is something you could do while you're sitting down watching TV and take your time and cut them all apart and all of that fun stuff. But basically, out of this pair of jeans, I'm going to get over $30 worth of denim if I had to go buy new denim. Think about it. You can turn these denim je these used denim jeans into rag quilts you make beautiful throw pillows all kinds of fun stuff you know and if there's worn places in it where there's there's a hole in it we'll just cut around it you don't have to use it unless you want to I don't believe in throwing anything away. There's that. And I think now I have all my pieces. I have four pieces of denim. Yeehaw. And I know that is more going to be more than enough for my hat. So I'm going to swap to yet another camera. And we're going to assemble our, our paper pattern and get that cut out. Okay. It's right there. So, here's one that I've already cut out. There's just three pieces to it. Now, in the instruction, it tells you how to measure your head for the size. So, mine, I used the large one. It was 24 inch diameter, but you want it a little bit loose. Think of hair or whatever, or maybe you're going to wear a scarf under it if you're going to be out gardening or, or you know what I'm saying. So these are all cut on the fold. It says right on them, cut on fold, okay? So when you're cutting them out, now here's one that's not cut out. You can see all those lines there, right? Don't cut, when you're first cutting this out, we're gonna, before we do that, we're gonna tape this all together so it's one big sheet. And the way we're going to do that, what I find when you have to put several of these to, several sheets together, and you can buy clothing patterns and do the same thing. So on this one, on the, the middle one here, the number two, I'm actually going to have to join these three together. Okay. If you see the gray square here, 
this will overlap this one, and this will overlap this one. So I'm going to trim off on this line the excess paper. That's my first step after I have it printed out. When you print it out, print it out though, remember, print it actual size. Okay, no scaling, no fit to page. And then you can measure this square with either, a, uh, so the small one measures one inch to double check. That large one should um, measure five centimeters, whichever number you want to use. And what I'm going to do here now, I'm just going to, yes, I didn't have all my stuff together like I thought I did. I usually have one laying right around in here, but I've been cleaning. Let's see here, hold on. But we're going to cut out this pattern piece. In just a minute, everybody. Okay. Well, I'm going to do something I normally don't do. <laughs> I don't want to have to take that much time to go into the other room. I'm going to use a yardstick and a rotary cutter. I do it all the time. It's really great if you have a large piece you need to cut. So I'm going to trim off the excess on these two right here. Okay. I'm just going to put that right on that line where I want to cut. There we go. And I'm going to trim it. Very good. There's my excess paper. And I'm going to trim it over here on the other side. Get that lined up just right. And there we go. That's all trimmed now, and now we can tape our three pattern pieces together. Put this over out of our way. Put up that rotary cutter for right now. There we go. So here's number one and number two. So they're going to go together like this. And as you see here, those little gray boxes, they will line up. And that's how you know you have everything perfectly aligned right there. Now I'm going to hold that down and this is just some scotch tape. I'm going to put a piece of tape right in the middle so it doesn't slip away from me. And then I'm just going to tape it. I'm going to put tape wherever up until the edge of the pattern. Not go a little ways past the pattern. Okay like so, and like so right down here. And that way my tape extends past the pattern because I'm going to cut it right out on that on the, the proper line for my, my size that I want to make it. So if you were doing the, this outmost lines would be for the size large. The next line in would be medium. The next line in would be small. The next line in would be extra small. Number wise, 21 inches, 22, 23, 24 inches. Okay. And that's described in the printout instructions. Super easy to do. Now we're going to repeat the same process over here. Just going to get it all lined up right here. I would love to have patterns like this back when I first started sewing. It makes it so nice. You can just shop for a pattern online and make one that way. There, that's all lined up. I'm checking my lines here. Oops. And once you get it up there, down just a hair. There we go. That's good. And just like before, we're going to tape that seam down so that the entire part of the pattern where those two pieces of paper meet are covered up with scotch tape. Oops. Just peel that off. That one got away.
away from me. There we go. Here we go right here. Now, that's all there is to it. Now, how easy was that? Super easy, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come, scoot over here to my computer screen and answer any questions, then we're gonna cut this apart, okay? So, let's see here. Oh, hi, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, SP. Hi, Janelle. Oh, thank you, Janelle. Wonderful, Belinda. Hi, Jody. Oh, Belinda, I love going to the thrift stores. It's a it's a good thing to go to a thrift store. You can find I listen, everybody. That's where I buy denim and wool at. Cause just think a wool wool, if you buy it by the yard, is generally thirty dollars a yard or higher. So go to a thrift store, go to the coat section. Mm -hmm. And look for 100% wool on the tags. You can save a lot of money if you like to sew with wool doing that. And then if you if you have a notion to, you can actually you can actually re-dye that wool depending on the color of it if you want to do some creative dyeing the same way with the denim or use fabric paint. Now then, here we are, right here. And what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna get my paper scissors. And for me, I use the number 24. And that's why, it's, to me, for especially something like this or a garment, I'm gonna make a mock-up first out of really inexpensive fabric so that <clears throat> I can test that pattern to see how it fits before I invest good, really great fabric into that. And all I'm gonna do now, I'm just, just gonna cut this out there we go. And then this way. Now right here it says cut on fold. Very important to remember. It also says on the front of the pattern, cut two on fold of your main fabric. That's the outside fabric that you'll see with the hat on. Cut two on fold for the lining. So yes, these hats are, have lining in them. And I'm just using the same fabric for the lining and for the main fabric. I'm using denim on both sides. <coughs> Excuse me. If you wanted to, you could put cotton quilting fabric for the lining. You could use flannel for the lining, whatever you choose to do. And the cool thing though, you can also use cotton fabric for the outer shell. You just might need to put some stabilizer in the brim to stiffen up that hat because it would make, if you use cotton quilting fabric for the entire hat, the brim will be super floppy. Okay. Because it would be even floppier than the one I did out of flannel. It's also a good idea to maybe pre-wash the fabric when you're making something like this. I usually, I never pre-wash my fabric for my quilts, but I sometimes I will pre-wash the fabric for a garment or a, something that I'm actually going to wear. Okay, I hope that made sense. We're just cutting them out. Cut this one out. You know, if you don't have scotch tape at home, you could use, you could actually use packing tape, clear packing tape, any type of tape you have. You could even use masking tape if that's all you have at home or painter's tape. Just something to hold those two pieces of paper together with. I don't think I would use glue simply because it's probably not going, it's probably going to come undone. And 
we're going to mark, we're going to put these, these, this fabric on our, we're going to put these patterns on our fabric and we're going to mark it. And then we're going to cut them out. And we're going to show you how to do that. <clears throat> you could use a friction pin if you're so inclined. I like to, I'm old school on that. I like to use chalk when I'm doing something like this simply because I don't want to take any, I'm going to be pressing and I don't want my lines to disappear. <coughs> Excuse me. This reminds me of cutting out paper stuff when I was a little kid and using paste to make a collage. How many of you all have done that? It was always so much fun. And you know, really, that's the concept that actually started collage quilts. And that has turned into a very expressive art form. there. There we go. Got that. There's all my waste paper off, except for this one piece right here. But basically, I measured when I cut the one out of the flannel, one half of a yard of fabric will basically make this hat with a little bit left over, is what I found out. Okay. So there's all my scrap paper. We're going to just wad that up and set it off to the side. <coughs> I'm going to pick up my pattern pieces and set them over here. I'm going to move my cutting mat out of the way while I set up my ironing mat. Okay, there's that. Then, where are you at? Where did I stick you? My, there it is. Okay. I have a wool pressing mat that I'm going to use. <clears throat> and I have my iron on. I have it, one of those Panasonic 360 cordless irons, and I really dig that. When I, I have to have an iron right here by my... It's not on, so we're going to have to let that heat up. And I've got my, my water in it for my steam. And let's see here. Did you turn on? Oh, I don't think, I don't think my iron, I don't think I turned it on correctly. Here we go. Hold on. Let me go check something. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now it's heating up. I didn't have the iron seated properly in its cradle, its charging cradle. Check it out. So yes, it will get super hot. It is a great iron. I love the fact that there is no cording on it or anything. Super awesome iron. So we're going to lift that heat up. So I'm going to come over here and swap my camera and we'll just kind of chit chat if you want to. Let's see here. There we go. Hello there. So I hear it heating up over there. That's a good sign. Because we have, you know, this denim here that I've already trimmed up to press before, <clears throat> excuse me, we cut it out. Let me go grab my chalk stick while I'm thinking of it. So we have that ready. It's just right over here in the corner, I think. About to find out. Not in that one. Okay, where are you? I have so much stuff, everybody. I mean, I have, it is just, sometimes it's just crazy trying to find something in my studio. Let me look in some drawers over here. 
There we go. First try. I'm going to use two different products so you can see the difference between them. So this is a chalk O-liner. This comes in like four colors. This is white. It should show up really good on the denim, right? So we use that one. And then this is called oops, Taylor's Chalk right here. Taylor's Chalk. I'm going to use this one also. You can see the difference between the two. Yeah, when I dropped it, I broke my chalk. Oh, well. It's just chalk, right? <laughs> so there's what happens if you drop your box of chalk. Normally, it's this size right here, but it is chalk. So if you drop it on the floor, it's more like this is more than likely what's going to happen to it. It's still perfectly usable. It's okay. So I'm just going to use this piece here. This stuff lasts forever, and it's really not expensive. I, it's not expensive. This is not expensive. So let's see. Let me see where my iron's at. Ooh, it feels hot, so we're about ready to get started. Let me check the, the messages over here. Thank you, Janelle. Oh, absolutely, Vanessa. You could use a cheap and an expensive cooling towel. You could use any fabric you want for your lining. What you want to make sure is you can you can get your finger between your forehead and the inside of the brim of that cap so it's not super tight. Or if you like it on tight, you can make it tight. That's totally up to you. But yes, you could totally use that that um, cooling that athletic cooling fabric that some stores sell for the lining. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to swap the camera over. The iron is ready. We're going to press next. Here we go. Okay. Get this so it's in the camera good. But so this, most of you know how to press. At least this has not been pieced. So, and all I do, I'm pressing it so it just lays nice and flat as I'm tracing out my pattern. These jeans have been in a storage trunk for four years since we moved here from Colorado to Illinois. I'm just going to give it a nice little press here. The great thing about these wool pressing mats is it's really handy to have it right next to your sewing machine. Okay, there's one done. Set that up on its shoulder. I'm going to adjust this camera just a bit. There we go. I think that would be a better view. I'm just going to set this to the side. And we got three more to go. But it is really nice to not have a cord on your iron to have to cope with. I know that's a small thing, but if you do a lot of ironing, it becomes a big thing. <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, here we go. So yes, you could decorate this with, before you cut out the pieces, if you mark out the shape of this, uh, say with the outer brim or whatever on this, then you could actually put this chunk of denim into an embroidery machine and embroidery on the outside parts of your hat if you wanted to to really make it you especially for you and uniquely for you or someone someone else if you're making one for a gift all types of way to embellish fabric okay and got this one to go Let's 
See how nice and hot that iron is though? Now I haven't even hit the steam for a burst of steam. I really haven't needed it, but there's a button right here, watch. Well, that is actually the sprayer. It will actually spray out a mist in front of the iron if you need it to. That can be a good feature if you've pre-washed fabric and it's wrinkly. Okay. There's that one. One more to go. And then we're going to have some fun marking out our pieces. And really, everybody, if you wanted to make a lot of these, you could actually do it production style and cut out, maybe you wanted to make five hats, okay? Do all the steps together. Say if you're, do all the deacons, get you prep your fabric for all five hats, press it all down, mark it out, cut out everything you need before you go to a sewing machine. And you could actually, it would actually, it's actually not much, you would just be able to churn out a lot more of these if you like to sell it craft shows and stuff. This would be a great item to sell at a craft show. Think about it. Okay, there's that. Now I'm going to turn this off. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave it on because I will have to have it for one more step just a little bit later. Okay, so I'm going to set this one to the side. I'm going to move my wool mat away. I'm going to bring my cutting mat back up. piece of fabric first just because I can and I'm gonna cut out the brim first so I need to I need to cut two of these two I need to cut four of these on a fold line for the hat okay so obviously it can't go like this Oh, Belinda, the iron I'm using is a Panasonic 360 cordless iron. I think there's a, if you want to read more about it, there is a link below in my description, I think, for that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a fold. And you know what? I may have to cut more fabric. It sure is different when you're using scraps as opposed to yardage. But it's all good. Let's see here. Fold, it needs to be a little bit bigger. There we go. I can tighten it up a hair. An alternative, what you could also do is cut out, instead of putting it on the fold, is cut out individual pieces. All you'd have to do is add the seam allowance on the fold line before you did that. That way you could just stitch two of these together to get one as opposed to cutting it on the fold line but i'm not going to do that we have a lot of denim jeans in storage that i can actually use for this type of a project i'm putting that right on the fold line right there now i'm going to get one of my marking instruments let's see I want my chalk aligner first, I think. Where did I lay that at? My goodness. There it is, it went under my table, under my sewing table. I'm gonna use this one first. And all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna trace it, check it out, right along the edge of that paper pattern. And it has, you can hear it kind of making this grinding noise. It has little teeth in here that dispenses the chalk. Watch how it happens when I pull it up. <coughs> Excuse me. There is my chalk line. Okay, so we're just going to go around this entire pattern. We're not going to put a chalk line on the fold. There's no need for that. that one. Now we do the other curve. I'm 
And then this straight line right here, I'm going to rotate this. And we're just going to come right down like this. I have to cut four of these like this. I also have to cut out two for my interfacing on this one as well. If I decide to put that in there, I haven't 100% decided on the interfacing. So, now I need, I'm going to cut this out and then I have to cut another one. And then I'd have the two pieces for my main fabric cut. And yes, I am going to have to bite the bullet and go in and get me um, a rotary cutting ruler because this will just drive me nuts. I'll do that on my intermission here in a minute. Okay, there's that. Let me give that another shot. Put a little more pressure down. There we go. There we go, that cut that time. And now I am just going to freehand it like this. Just go slow. If you have a small, the tiny rotary cutter, it's much better for curves. I have one. I'm just not sure where it's at. There's that. You can also, instead of doing this, you can use your scissors. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to put a couple of pins in it so my fabric doesn't shift. I'm going to put one right up here. If you just put some pins, you can just pick it up and cut it out with your scissors. I'll put one right up here. Okay, I'm gonna put one right down here at the edge. Hold that, that in place. And then I'm gonna just cut it out with my scissors. chalk line. There we go. Now I'll remove those. There we go. And there is half of the outside brim. Check that out. Right there. And you know what, with two layers of denim, I'm not sure you would actually need interfacing with this. Let me see, let me hold it up. Because that would be pretty thick. I pro I'm not gonna do interfacing on this one. If I was using flannel or cotton fabric, you'd really need interfacing. A heavier fabric like this, no, it would just be a waste. So I'm not going to cut interfacing on this one. Okay, so. Let's see here. Get that off. I'm pretty sure I don't have a pattern piece that I could use. I don't, the patterns are too big to cut anything else out of this. So guess what? This is scrap for another project now. And what I do is I know I would never use a little piece like this, so I'm just going to trim some of it. You never know, I might. I'm just going to trim off some of those points. And then we'll just set that to the side. Okay. So I'm put all my scraps up here and I'll go through them later and organize them. Now I'm going to cut another one of these. Let's see here. Put my paper pattern down so I know how far up to go with this fold. That's pretty good right there. So I'm just going to lightly press this so it lays down flatter. There we go. If you're really quick, that will not damage your cutting mat, as you just saw. Now, <clears throat> this one I'm going to use the actual Taylor's chalk to mark with. There we go.
and it's a totally different feel. So you see how I did that? It puts a nice line on there. I'm sure you can see that line. I just looked at the camera screen. Yes, you can. I'm just going to go up and trace it on. It's a little easier to trace on a curve with Taylor's chalk than it is the whirl, but they're both super easy. This one is much less messier. You can buy refills for it, and it lasts. I've never put a refill in that, and I use it a lot. Okay, so we're going to do this other inside curve next. That's fun. And it's fun to do. It's like, like, like I'm in school doing an art project. And you know what? Actually, if you sew, you are an artist because this, there is an art to this, everybody. Did you ever think of that? By sewing on a sewing machine, you are officially a textile artist. Okay, so there's that one cut. I am going to put one pin right up here. This is my fold line, okay? And then I'm just going to carefully cut that out. Make sure you can see here you can see it. I'm just going to hold it at the fold line and start snipping. Now you're gonna need, when we sew this, you're gonna need, a, I'm gonna put a size 100 denim needle in it. If you don't have that, you might be able to get by with a size 90. You could also use a top stitch needle, but I'm gonna use an actual denim needle for this project. It's just the way those needles are made. They were designed to go through heavy denim. And this, there are some areas where this is going to be pretty heavy to sew through. Now we'll just come over here and cut this one. There's that. And I might get a piece out of that. We'll see. And then we'll cut this one out. There's that. It goes to scraps. I know that's a scrap. <laughs> we'll see if we'll, that'll work for another piece. I will just have to see. Okay, so there's that. Now there's my two pieces for my, my outside fabric. This is what you would see this is the part of the brim you would see after it's constructed, okay? So I doubt that this is long enough for the band. The band is what actually attaches to this and stands up. This piece of fabric will stand up and then the, cr the crown will go right on top of that, okay? Okay, let's see how long this is. I'm fairly certain it will not be big enough. I tell you what, if you were making an extra small one, yeah, it would fall on the fabric, but I have a big head. <laughs> and please, don't even go there. <laughs> so that will not work for me. Hold on. Will it work for the other part, though? No, I didn't check that. Probably not. <clears throat> no, it won't. Okay. You know what? I am going to have to cut some more denim out. I can see that right now. And that's cool. Because I have plenty. <laughs> when I take a break here in a little bit, I will go upstairs and grab another one off the pile. Yes, I have a pile of jeans upstairs to make stuff with. I found some really cool uh, jeans in my stash that has embroidery on them. That would make a beautiful... Bag. I'm saving that to make like a computer bag out of. And yes, we'll be doing that online here. Let's see here. We're going to cut two more of these is where we're at. Okay. Oh, this is going to be tight. Let me do it this other way. I might not be able to use this piece for this. I do to know. Nope, that piece will not fit on that.
But you know what? Y'all got the idea of this one. So there's no reason for you to watch me cut two more exactly like what I just cut. So, and I can do the rest of my cutting after this video is over to get back the rest of my pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. So next, we have to cut two of this one, and there's your fold line. We're going to do that next. And just one of these, this is the top of the hat on the fold line right here. So we're going to get these next. Because <clears throat> I think out of these two legs, I can get everything out of the one pair of jean legs. I can get at least half of the piece, all the main fabric out of it. Okay. Oh yeah, look how, see that one doesn't take nearly as much. Let me check something out here. And you know what? I think I can get this and one of these out of this one piece. And then I know I can get two more pieces out of my other uh, part of the leg that we trimmed earlier. And that will make it good to go. So, make sure that this is... I'm going to conserve it as much as I can because I've been wanting to make a circular rag quilt out of denim. It's one of the reasons I was going through my denim stash. Just a quick little press there just to help hold that fold line done while I'm marking. There we go. And now we can mark. And you can feel if your chalk goes on top of the paper, it's okay. You can go over that as many times as you need to. It's all good. And this is so easy. A lot of people are scared to make anything that has any type of apparel. A hat is apparel, everybody. And as you can see here, it's not that hard to do. If you can sew a straight seam, you can do this. I will tell you, with this hat, there will be a lot of pinning, pinning in it, and I'm going to show you how to, how to, how to clip a curve so that the seam line will lay flat. That's on next week's episode. So I'm just going. I'm not even going to put a pin in this one. I'm just going to start cutting. side to come up and that one's all cut <clears throat> excuse me it's almost coffee time everybody there we go so check it out this was my fold line here now this is the part that goes around the sides of your head this attach it this here attaches to this one attaches to the brim and this one will come around and meet together, and that's where this piece will attach right up here, like this. Okay. So, there's that one. we got to do one more. But before we do that, we're going to cut out our crown. So this is called the band, the hat band. And this is called the brim. Here's this. And next we're going to cut the top. It's also called the crown sometimes, but this is the top of your hat. We're going to cut that out. I'm just going to fold this over. I'm going to fit the pattern to it. Let's see where we're at here. Think. Yep, that will be plenty. Just going to press that little down line just a little bit. Not enough to crease it, just so it lays flatter for me. And then we're just going to trace around. Okay. 
I'm going to use the charcoal liner this time. See how that's going. See, <clears throat> you have to go back and forth a little bit more on denim with the chalk with this type of marking instrument. And I'm so I'm going to use my Taylor's chalk that I broke. <laughs> and I'm just, it just, it's actually, if you compare the two, it's a little bit quicker to use Taylor's chalk than it is a chalk aligner. However, on quilting fabric, if I'm going to mark something on quilting fabric, the chalk aligner, the other instrument, is really better because. A thinner, a thinner, more delicate fabric is better to use a chalk liner on because it won't crease it as bad as it will with this. I hope that made sense. Okay, so now we're just going to cut this out. So when you get a chance, now I don't get paid to say this, everybody. I just happened to cross that LB Textiles Patterns in Australia by a fluke. I think I was doing a Google search or something and it came up. Anyway, there's a lot of clothing patterns on there that I'm also going to make. Make live online like I'm doing with this because there's some cool stuff in there and I really like that website. <clears throat> okay. We just needed one of these. Nope, we need two of those. We need two of these because we have to have one for the outer and one for... I'm only going to cut one now, but you will have to cut two of those. This is my main fabric. You also need one for your lining. Whatever your lining fabric is going to be, you would cut two of those. So, we're going to go back up here and cut one more of our band. Because right now I'm just cutting the main fabric. Cut back a little smaller. Let's do a test. That's close enough. That works for me. Let's do a quick little press. I love that iron, everybody. It is so handy. There's a link in my description, an Amazon link for that iron if you're so inclined to do so. See how easy it is to mark that with a piece with Taylor's chalk? That's how easy it was. And there it is. And it really stands out nice. You can see that line really well. Okay. And like I said, Taylor's chalk is very inexpensive. <clears throat> so you shouldn't be afraid to use it. And it is actually made for to mark clothing with. Other chalk would just dust off way too easily for what we're doing here. Cut off that excess before I go any further. Just move my pattern piece. But that's okay if that happens. Just line the cut edges back up and you're good to go. Okay, here we go. Now we can keep on going. Okay, and there's, <coughs> excuse me, everybody, that is all the fabric cut for the outside of the hat. That's the main fabric. Since we're right here, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my lining fabric for this. Since we're right here, I'll do my fold line real quick. There we go down my pattern right on that fold line and then I'm going to mark it with chalk. Okay. 
Ooh wee. Hello everybody, I'm gonna have a fun day tomorrow. I have two doctor's appointments. One's easy. I'm just going in so it can show me, once again, the proper way to give myself a shot. And then, in the afternoon, I'm going back for my checkup from the surgery I had in January, which I already seen the test results from the blood workup. I know it's gonna be a good visit, so that's a good thing. But it's gonna be exhausting. <laughs> I don't have a lot of energy right now. But there we go, so. I have, now all I have left to do is cut two more of these. Where's that paper piece? Right here. Two more of the bands and two more of the brims, and I'll have all my pieces cut for my bucket hat. Now, how easy is that? Pretty easy, right? So let's go over here and answer some questions. <clears throat> let's see here. Oh, wonderful, Belinda. So everybody, I'm gonna take a short break and I'm gonna go upstairs and grab another pair of jeans. Do I have another? You know what, I have another pair down here on the floor. I'm such a goober. But I am gonna take a quick break so I can go use the restroom and I'll be back in, in about five minutes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in five minutes.
Okay, everybody, we're going to get started back up here. This. So I am going to have to cut up another pair of jeans, just like the previous, excuse me, the previous pair. And all I'm going to do is cut off the legs at the, at the crotch level, because that's the fabric I'm after. That's where you'll get the most, the most fabric when you recycle jeans. But I'm saving everything because in the future, in a future episode of this, we're going to actually be making, I'm doing a whole series on what you can do with recycled jeans, in other words. And what's cool about it, though, is I'm designing a pattern uh, to do, a, I'm going to make a, some, tote, some tote bag slash computer bags, whatever you want to call it, camera bag, out of recycled jeans. And it's going to be a lot of fun. <clears throat> There's so much you can do with recycled denim. And like I said before, if you go to a store, a fabric store to buy new denim, let me tell you something. If you haven't checked, check it out the next time you're in a fabric store. It's not cheap. Okay. You can see this pair. It has some wear in it. Okay. So I'm going to swap over to this camera so you can see a little better. You can see that has some wear in it there, but you know what? I'll just cut around it. It's okay. First, I'm going to cut off the hems. Oops, my scissors here. Sorry to interrupt. Have you seen my jeans? No, I haven't actually. All right, I'll keep looking. Okay. Uh-oh. Everybody, I told a little, a little untruth right there. So, he'll find that big pile up there. He'll never miss them. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. <laughs> Although, quite honestly, wouldn't you know it, <laughs> when I do this, someone wants to look for the, for, my gene, for the used gene pile here in the house. It's all good. Okay. I tell you what, I'll have to make him a... He, he's the one that mows the yards. I'm going to have to make him one of these for a, a yard mowing hat, right? <laughs> well, I got... So I have one more seam. Boy, that got me frustrated. So I have, have to cut out the two side seams on this. And to finish this, I, let's see. I will have to do both, I think. Yes, I will. Oh, and there's Puffin coming in the room. He has his little rat baby that squeaks. Hey, Puffy. What you doing, Bobo? Yes, you're my good boy. Daddy loves you. Okay, let's get these cut out. And all I'm doing, I'm just cutting out. There's the side seams, that real heavy out, outer leg seam. And I'm saving all of these side seams I'm cutting out because I'm going to show you something really cool in a future project you can use you can make out make using these so I don't I want to cut them all the way up the longer they are the better it's all good now when I'm watching TV or something I will clean up the edges of this <clears throat> which and what I mean by that I'm gonna trim oops come here you Okay, when I'm sitting and watching TV, I'm gonna trim off that excess fabric right up to that seam line. And the same here on the back. I'm gonna trim it, trim it up nice and neat so it's a nice even piece, okay. So I have one more seam on this one to cut. <coughs> Excuse me. And so if you haven't figured out, here's another fun fact about this particular, how this works out. This hat it will actually be reversible. Reversible. So if you make a hat out of two different, two different fabrics, you could actually turn it inside out and have two hats in one. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, Bubby. 
No, I'm, I've got sharp, sharp scissors in my hand. I can't touch you, pet you right now, honey. You're my good boy. Okay. And trimmy, trim, trim. Come on, you. You know, it's, I have bought jeans at thrift stores <clears throat> in the past. Sometimes I'll buy them because sometimes you can find those really cool jeans that have all kinds of embroidery and stuff on them. And boy, you can make some beautiful stuff with that. Okay. So there's those, there's two pieces of fabric. And I think that's, no, nope, I'm going to have to do the other leg also. I want to make sure I have enough to cut all the pieces I need for my hat. Okay. And then I am going to sh I am going to cut the fusible. I I've decided well, on my break. I decided I'm going to go ahead and cut out if the interfacing. If you're going to put interfacing in it to make the brim stiffer, and that's what I'm I'm probably going to do that with this particular pair just because I can. But I'm going to go ahead and cut that one out also. Okay. I'm going to cut off these side seams here. Come on, you. There we go. Just easier if you can lay it out flat and pull it towards you as you're cutting. I'm taking a little more time on this one so I can get a nice close trim and I won't have to retrim that one. That looks really nice. So my idea for these side seams, everybody, I'm going to braid them. I'm going to take three side seams after they're trimmed and do a braid and use them as handles for a tote bag. That's what I'm going to use these side seams for. Handles for a tote bag. Think about it. I think it would be totally cool. Now this one, I'm going to trim it from the back. I'm going to take my time and trim it. Should have done that with the other one, but I was so excited to get started on this. I'm just trimming it up close to that seam line without cutting any of the stitching that hold, held that flat filled seam together. Now the other seam, the inseam, the inside seam, yeah, I'm just, I will probably end up just tossing those because they're for what I'm wanting to use them for, I don't think I'd have any use for that particular part. Okay. Here we go. There we go. There's that one. Now look how not, now check this out. Look at that. Now think of this as a handle for a bag, but, and I don't have any that are neatly trimmed other than this one, but if you have three of these together, you'll get the idea. You just braid it, just like you'd braid hair or whatever. Just braid that, but make sure they're all trimmed like this. And I think that that'll make a beautiful handle for a bag. Okay. So I gave, you, gave away a precursor to my little thing I'm working on here in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have one more seam to cut out of this, and then we can do some pressing. Maybe I may not have to do it. This one's not wrinkled real bad, so may not have to do any pressing on this one. And I'm just going to cut this one out right here, and we'll be good to go. <clears throat> oh, wonderful SP. Yes, I have. We have. We hardly throw. We for clothing. We don't throw anything away. I've got so much clothing right now in plastic tote storage. Yeah, I'm going to be making a lot of stuff out of some clothing just because. 
you don't get nothing for it at a yard sale, literally. So why? I'm just going to use it for projects, for gifts and stuff. Because believe it or not, you can get quite a bit of fabric out of one garment if you take your time and deconstruct it. A lot of great fabric. Okay. Ooh, there we go. So there's my, my fabrics. So now I can cut out the another two pieces for my band and another two pieces for my brim. We're going to swap it over to the other camera. Excuse me. And I can tell the difference between the two pair of jeans. One is much lighter than the other one. So probably the older pair, the lighter, I don't know. I'll just be able to totally be able to do the, the turn it inside out whichever way I want to once it's all said and done. Okay, so to make two more of these right here, this is the brim. That takes the most fabric. So I'm going to do those two first. Okay. And you know what? I am going to have to press these. There's just no way around that. <clears throat> so put these over here to the side that I've already cut. Get my pattern pieces. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to cut my, my pressing mat back up here on the table. And then we're good to go. Now, if I was going to use a lot of steam, I would remove my cutting mat from under this. Or you could put a towel between the cutting mat and your whole pressing mat. But since I'm just ironing and not going to be doing a lot of steaming, this will be okay for what we're doing. Just gonna get these all pressed out. You know when denim denim starts fraying like this, oh my gosh, that's the most comfortable denim ever. So nice and soft. Okay, there's one. Let's do another one. I'm gonna put it face down this time because it's one this one's one to curl curl along the edge a little bit. We're gonna we don't want that. Yeah. Iron shut off because I hadn't used it, so let's get it heated back up. Okay. Doesn't take long for it to heat up about a minute. Let me give me a drink of coffee while we're waiting on that iron. to mark and cut out when it lays nice and flat. There we go. One more adjustment here, and that'll be two of them. Just pressing the, this is what I, if you're just joining, what I'm doing, 
I've cut a pair of blue jeans apart and I've cut all the seams and the hem out of it. These are just the legs that I'm using for this project, for this bucket hat. And now I'm pressing it so it lays nice and flat before I mark it with my pattern pieces to cut out. I've already got the, all the pieces cut for the main fabric. Now I'm cutting a second piece um, for my lining is what I'm doing. If I change my mind on the lining between now and the next week, I'll be able to make two hats if I decide on a different lining, but I'm pretty sure I won't. Blah, blah, blah. Because <laughs> you could also use like cotton fabric for a lining or maybe you have an old shirt laying around. You know, a shirt that's never going to be worn again. I mean, like a cotton shirt or a cotton poly blend. I would stick, personally, I try to stick with 100% cotton whenever possible. It just, it just has a better hand to it. It feels better against your skin. Because remember, this is a hat, and you're going to have it on top of your head. And you want that to be as comfortable as possible, right? So there you go. Like I said earlier, you could always take this piece of fabric that we have salvaged from a pair of jeans, and if you have an embroidery machine, you could embellish it with some beautiful embroidery before you cut your quilt piece, your pieces for the hat out. If you're going to do that, I would mark that entire the piece on the right side of the fabric so I could then position the embroidery to sit inside of it, okay? And I think that's it. That is it. I'm going to turn my iron off now because I will not be needing that anymore right for today. Now then, move my cutting mat out of the way. And I'm going to cut out. I'm going to cut out the biggest pieces first, which would be this right here. This is the brim. This sits on a fold right here. <clears throat> like this, and I'm, I'm going to leave that on because I want to press lightly. Press my fold down just so it's easier to cut out and everything. Let's see how that looks. Nope, needs more than that. Let's see something here. Oop, this is the way I'm going to go. I'm going to go up like this. There we go. How about that first try? So just don't want to crease it, but I just want this to lay nice and flat. Only once have I, have I made my cutting mat buckle from the heat of an iron. After it cooled down, it laid nice and flat though, so it was okay. Now I'm gonna use my Taylor's chalk, just like I did previously today, and just mark out my cutting line right along the edge of the fabric. These pattern pieces have the seam allowance included in them. There's no need to worry about that. There we go. There's one of them cut. And not cut, but marked. We're going to cut that out right now. Now, 
I've seen a lot of another cool thing you can do with this. Okay, this scrap, this recycled demo. You can actually, once you get all the heavy seams, you could leave for other projects, you could leave those seam lines in if you wanted to. But you can actually sew it, cut it, sew it back together and make one really big piece of fabric, whatever you would want to do with that. And no, I don't need, I need one more piece for that one. Will that fit? Will that smaller one fit there by chance? Let's see. It'll be close. Nope. Nope. Let's try it up this way. No, it's not. Okay. Didn't think it would, just like before on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna fold this up from the bottom. Maybe it's got some of that. Let me see here. No, it's not thin. I think that's just a, where something got on that, the leg of that piece of denim and faded. It actually bleached out. There was a chemical. There was something on there, so it's okay. I'm going to cut my other one of my. Do do do. I will need to cut my other big one out if it will fit. I don't think it will on this. Nope, that is just not quite large enough, so I'm going to cut one of my bands out. I have to cut two bands and two brims again. And when I do, I'll have all my pieces cut for my little quilt, for my little project here. Let's do it like that. There we go. Let's give it a little press so it lays flat. It still has enough heat in it, even though it kicked off for me to be able to do that, so it's all good. Now we're just going to mark it again. Actually, just click back on since I used it. It's a good thing. It just keeps it at a good temp. Handy dandy. You don't have any cords in your way. All that fun stuff. Okay, there's that one, and we'll cut that out. And I just have two more pieces to cut out for this project. This piece. There we go. Oh, that's good. So there's one of each of the hat. There's the band, there's the brim. I need one more of these and one more of these. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay. Let me just see a chance if that. I don't think it's big enough, but we're going to just double check it real quick. Nope. Like this. Well, I can get another one of those out of it, that's for sure. So we're just going to do that next. Get that one completely done. There we go. They're like that. Okay, give that a press. And we'll chalk, put a cutting line all the way around that pattern piece. Two 
two of those cut. Just like before, we're going to cut it out right on that chalk line. I'm just holding the fold line in place so nothing shifts. are cut by cutting those two you can see the difference in the color so I'm going to make sure I only use <clears throat> for the inside and outside this will I'm going to make sure I use the same total values if you're using more than one pair of jeans just so they kind of match if that's how I'm going to do it anyway you can do yours however you want to and I've got one more piece to cut and those will all be cut out. And I will demo how to cut that fusible fleece if you need to, this exact same process. But if you're going to do it, you only need to cut two off of the brim piece. Okay. Two of the, I will get that out of there. There we go. Oops, hold on. Does that matter? I don't think I'll matter. We'll find out. It shouldn't matter. If it does, I can always cut another one when the time comes. Okay. So now we're just going to trim that. Mark this one with chalk. more of these to cut. This is my final piece of fabric to cut on my hat. And this one was actually, is actually what I'm considering calling the lining of the hat. <clears throat> and once again, just cut it right out on the chalk line. If you're more comfortable, you can put some wonder clips in here or straight pins just to hold it together while you're cutting. But if you have it on a nice flat surface, really, you don't have to. Just take your time. Never be in a rush when you're working on a project. Just cut that, put that over to the scrap pile. <clears throat> this out. Okay. And then we have one more line to cut right here. And there it is. Alrighty. So that gives me my two pieces here for my lining two brim pieces. Yep, perfect. All right, so I have two pieces cut for my main fabric of the brim, the band, and one of the hat for the main fabric, and two pieces cut out of this one for the lining, two pieces cut for the band, and one piece cut for the top or the crown of the hat. Now, if you were going to use fusible fleece in it, and I keep, I really don't think it's necessary for denim, so I'm not going to actually do this for the denim. The only thing you need to cut is this piece right here. If you're going to add um, an interfacing stabilizer type of item, if you don't want your hat to be floppy, you need to add a form of interfacing or stabilizer to the brim. You would need two of these if you're going to do it, and you would just cut them out, just like we just did out of our main fabric. Easy peasy, live and squeezy. And that's really all there is to it. Okay. Turn that off. 
I'll come over here and answer some questions. Let's see here. Go back on this other camera. Hello there. <laughs> okay. Let me get a sip of my coffee. But yeah, that's how easy it is to cut out. That's all the parts for one bucket hat right there, made out of a pair of recycled jeans. Or in this case, it took me two pairs. It didn't use it didn't use but one leg out of the second pair. So and there were scraps left over is just because the size of the pieces and all that fun stuff, but so and I have plenty left over. I got enough left over probably to make two tote bags out of that. That's a future episode. And that's how cool it is. And it's you're you're actually doing something wonderful for the environment by recycling used clothing as well. Hi Sue. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions, anybody? Now, next Sunday, next Sunday at noon, I am going, we're going to um, stitch that hat entirely together. So next Sunday, we will finish that hat project. <clears throat> Excuse me, just a minute here. <coughs> okay. Like I said, next Sunday, we will finish the hat project, and then we'll move on to something else. But... Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to call this one a wrap for today. And it's going to be fun to see how this turns out next week. So before we go, once again, this was my mock hat that I made out of super cheap flannel. It's super floppy, the brim, because flannel doesn't hold any shape or anything without a... Um, without an interfacing type of stabilizer. What I would prefer to use, and I'm gonna use if I when I do have to do it, this is fusible fleece. So it's kind of like a super thin batting, but on one side it has glue, so you can fuse it with an iron, and that will stiffen for a hat, that would super stiffen up a brim. Okay, so let me just put this on. There we go. So next Saturday, next Sunday at noon, Central Standard Time, we're going to finish our denim recycled jean bucket hat. Thank you for tuning in. Love each and every one of you, and I will see you soon.